Hey, it's Matt Stevenson, and I am now here with the original Freaky Clown, arguably the most interesting conversation so far. Um, I've never talked to anyone who comes to the security industry with a history of breaking into banks. How does that apply to what we're facing today with regards to whether it's state players, cyber villains? Tell me about your evolution and, and how that helps. Okay, so uh, my background is breaking into banks and physical buildings. Um, I think that nowadays we seem to be very much focused on the digital side of uh, cybersecurity. It's like locking everything down with like firewalls and uh, you know background uh, back end systems. Trouble is, if I can walk into your building and steal all of your data um, by picking up the servers themselves, then that's going to be much easier for me. It's it's a lot more high risk, but the the gain for me is I, I get a lot of data very quickly. Um, well, and that's you. You see all these great stories that get turned into movies. What was the Brazilian heist a couple of years ago? They yeah. tunneled underground two blocks to get in there. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, like one of the first movies I ever saw was a film called Sneakers with Robert Redford. Yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's unbelievable to me that I watched that as a kid, and then years later, I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm breaking into the banks, taking the money, and going, "Here's what I got," and you know, here's how to make your your bank safer. And it's not just banks; it's like you know, government building, buildings, it's military sites, it's it's commercial office blocks. They're they're just incredibly easy to. You can literally walk into anywhere. Well, and it does seem that on the digital side. They're just building a virtual version of higher walls, thicker walls, deeper moats, yeah. but it's not really getting creative in the approach. Yeah, exactly. It's, uh, they're, they're doing the same things, but as you say, in the, in the digital format, you might as well build it all in Minecraft and then steal the Minecraft server, you know? It's, you're not helping yourself. Um, I've broken into many, many data centers where, you know, you, you can go in and there's literally billions of pounds, like, flicking through the wire. And all you have to do is unplug something and it, it screwed it. And, and there's, there's not a quick digital fix for that. You have to have someone go there and plug the wire back in if they happen to know where it is. So tell me about the integration between what you're doing in, in the physical world and working with people and how that applies to what, it's hard to, to believe I'm now saying traditional InfoSec, but we think yeah. of the ones and zeros and the yeah. green screen with yeah. the matrix. How does that combine to really help solidify your defense? Okay, so... Um, it's all about the mindset of the the, the uh, employee. Yeah, if they understand that when they're in an office environment, they can't trust anything physical in there, then that that easily leads into their digital lifestyle. So if they're not going to trust the sorts of things that they're going to say to their colleagues, then why would they put that on Facebook? And so it starts making them realise that there's a real world impact to almost everything they do on the digital side. And is who's going to be the most I don't want to say the, the uh, I hate to say the weak link, but like when, when you're coming in doing your assessments, are there departments you look at specifically? Is it more of an age group without doing anything that's an HR violation? Like what's your primary focus when you talk to clients early on in the relationship? It, it is always the front end people. So it's like the receptionists that are forced to do security because they haven't put enough money into like actually getting a security guard. It's the security guard that hasn't got enough training or education around them. Um, it's, it's the front end people because most people Oh, they'll, they'll probably come in through the loading bay dressed as a pizza delivery guy. That never happens. Anyone that says that they've done a social engineering test dressed as a pizza guy is a little bit iffy because you just walk in in a suit and you can walk past everyone. And what's that? If you speak authoritatively and wear a blue shirt and black pants, they think yeah, you're exactly. security. Yeah, I mean, if you if you if you scope out any building beforehand, you get to see what the sort of dress code is. And as long as you dress the same or slightly better than that, people just assume wrongly that that they're better they're or rather they're worse than you are so that you must be someone of higher status so therefore they'll they'll hold the door open for you now, so what's catching your eye as far as things either that we're looking forward to as we're moving you know because things move so quickly now or is there anything that that's caught your eye said look we really need to be focusing on this um i'd say that we we're kind of lagging behind actually it's, it's nothing catching my eye at the moment is because of people are starting to look at things like biometrics they can all be bypassed and the worst thing about biometrics is you know if, if i steal your fingerprints that's it i've got them for life i can use that wherever you've used your fingerprints. and i've got them for and life. you've got them for life you can't chop your finger well some people can chop their fingers off but uh, you can use pineapple juice to do that but you know that's that's a whole new important <laughs> security tip <Yeah. laughs> um, so um yeah biometrics is probably a, a a false flag people see it as like oh that's that's inherently that person but the trouble is it is inherently that person and will stay with them for life whereas passwords unfortunately as bill gates said the password's dead but it's still here because it works 
you know, it's, it's a very, as long as you make it complicated and easy to use, then that's still the best way, I think, at the moment. And if people are looking for more information about what we've talked about so far, or just the freakiest of clowns, where can they find more? Um, so they can find me on Twitter. It's uh, at underscore, underscore, freaky clown, underscore, underscore. Uh, a little bit complicated, I know, but um, yeah, it's the best way to get hold of me. All right, so we're going to bring it to you from all angles. I got There's got to be more clowns out there that can help us make sure that you're safe. You can find me at PacPant73. Come on back.